Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the Book of Job, chapter 3. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. Let the, that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and sh the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year, let it not be let it not come into the number of the months lo let that night be solitary let no joyful voice come therein let them curse it that curse the day who are ready to raise up their morning let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark let it look for light but have none let it see the dawning of the day because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb nor a hid sorrow from mine eyes why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why, do the, why the breasts that I should suck? For now I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then I, had I been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or as an untimely birth I had not been, as infants which never saw the light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together, they hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Therefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not and dig for it more than for hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, Yet trouble came. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I actually don't want to offer any analysis from Job 3 where Job expresses the, you know, how he's feeling after the difficulties of, you know, the boils and the, the, the losing of, of the different things that he had in his life. Like, um, you know, they came and smote the four corners of the house. And, and Job was the only one that escaped. Or so I'm not sure if I'm interpreting that correctly. But just the idea that, you know, in the first chapter, you know, um, God says to Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put forth not thine hand. And then in the second chapter, God even telling Satan that, um, Behold, he's in thine hand, but save his life. So that's where he gets the sore boils from the sore of his foot unto his crown. And Job just... In, in, in chapter 3, cursing the difficulty of the situation is in, but not, it, seeming, it doesn't seem that he's cursing God. And um, one thing um, I want to point out in, um, in, in one of the realizations that I, I sort of, um, I, I thought, I've obviously, of course, not obviously, I say, but, but had this thought. Um, we say here, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. And I want to just say this. I don't know what Satan, like, who, I, I don't know if I've ever seen Satan, what he looks like, anything. I definitely believe Satan is a real being with real powers and that, you know, he will be, you know, one day there will be Armageddon and, and things like that as written in the book of Revelation. And one thing that's very interesting to me about Satan is is the perspective he has. Look at the way he speaks here. He speaks as though he knows definitively, definitively what man is like. He says, skin for skin, yea, 
all that a man hath will he give for his life. So this is a very, very powerful um, verse because it, it touches on so many of the different themes in the Bible. And here's where I actually want to get um, uh, some different translations here because I want to understand if there's any kind of different you know, interpretation or reading. Um, yeah, the idea that a man will give up everything he owns, all his possessions, everything, everything he possesses for his life. And um, one thing I would say, arguably the most important thing that a man possesses is his soul. And that too, the, the quality of his soul. And I think about, when I think about this verse, I think about how truly I don't believe that Satan understands Jesus. That he understands the love that, that Lord Jesus, Lord God Jehovah, um, inspire. And um, um, one of the, the verses I want to point to there is, is here. Um, in my, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. If you've been following along in this series, you know it's the stoning of Saint Stephen, my favorite saint. And I want to read, I want to read here. Um, as we read, as we read here in Acts of the Apostles 7, um, 50, 751 and on. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now we contrast St. Stephen's last and epic words with what is, is written here in the Bible, in, in, in Job 2, 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. That's one of the things, this verse here, Job 2, 4, is one of the verses I'll remember where Satan, he looks at man and says, if you, if, man will give everything he has for his life. That's what he thinks. That's what he thinks. He thinks that man will just give up everything to keep his life. And I mentioned this in yesterday's video, Matthew 16, 25, Jesus saying, for whosoever will save his, seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Saint Stephen lost his life literally, not just in terms of like giving your whole life for Christ, like living it. He actually gave his life for Christ. And in the end, he has been, I believe, has been, because it's a test of faith, I don't want to say it as a fact, he has been rewarded with eternal life as one of the, the first martyrs of Christianity. And that's what I talk about, where when I look at Satan, he doesn't understand God. He doesn't understand that idea of the spirit against the flesh, that there really are people who are so brave like St. Stephen. When, when you see the verse here, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You feel this, this bravery emanating off of St. Stephen that no matter how, what, how bad the odds are, he will not give up Christ. And that is something that when Satan says, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. He doesn't understand that right there. That kind of love that is capable of changing the world. 
And with that, I'll go ahead and end the Bible reading there for today and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video. Since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I worked my software developer job I created and I've created this daily diary video for 5923. And with no further achievements since yesterday's daily diary video, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.